Welcome to episode two of Dying Generation. I am Bunny Williams. And I am Stephen Scott Scott Norfolk. There we go. Say that again. (laughs) (laughs) And I am Stephen Scott Norfolk. It's the only our second show and I fucked it up already. You want to try that again? Or should we just go? No, let's just go. Warts and all, man. Warts and fucking all. (laughs) Sorry to our um, listener, Bill. Yes. Yes. Um, I, I, I figured out the Bill and Ted sequel. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because they're still fucking talking about making a sequel. They're talking about making a third. Bill and Ted's excellent rocking chairs? I would like, I would like this to be, like, turned into, like, a hard drama, you know? Just like Bill Drugstore Cowboy there. or something? Like the like the disenfranchised band, you know, uh-huh. where where it's now all about music, and one of them's got to be on heroin. You know how I love heroin. Yeah, <laughs> one of them's got to be on heroin or meth or something, you know. Yeah. And you know, just just turn the Bill and Ted character into into like bitter old bastards, <laughs> you know. Sort of like Metallica. Fucking yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I can see that. Obviously, we're not going to be able to get George Carlin to the sequel unless we get really specific in the script. <laughs> yeah, whoever, you, whoever, whoever does like the kind of Rufus type character helps them to find the meaning in the music. Oh my god, Steve, you just made me cry. (sighs) (laughs) You 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 have sold out, man. You are so Hollywood. Fuck you, man. I'm out of (laughs) here. You're so fucking Hollywood. That would be like the best way to 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 just amp up a fucking Stupid comedy trilogy. Yeah, it would. And it'd be great. It'd, it'd be like my revenge. If we wrote this together, it would be like my revenge for them taking like really kick ass seventies shows like Starsky and Hutch and stuff yeah. like that, and turning it into stupid ass comedies. Yeah. I exactly. fucking hate that trend. Dark <laughs> Shadows. Mm-hmm. Barnabas Collins spinning in his grave if he's dead. Yeah. And that and oh man, I I I really can't understand why Tim Burton fucking did that. It's like it's like you're not. A I'm fan, telling are you, you, I'm telling you that Tim Burton and Johnny Depp are heroin buddies. Yeah. And Helena Bonham Carter. I mean, God's sake, look at the woman's hair. That should be sign enough. In every fucking movie, her, yeah. But see that you know we see her in movies. What's her hair like in real life? I don't think I've seen many real life pictures of her. Oh, I have, and her hair is exactly the same. It's just like this out of control really? this sort of thing. Yeah, she needs. Oh, she desperately man. needs to be in a production of Taming of the Shrew with that hair. <laughs> you know, and I, and I, I, I like fell in love with her in Hamlet, man. You know, like she was just oh, just goddamn adorable. Yeah. You know. Yep. Yeah, I liked her in. Uh, I'm sitting back there being just like, Hammer, don't be a tap that. Tap that. Get over the fucking melancholy <laughs> at least for a fucking night. <laughs> <laughs> Give it a rest. Yeah. And I liked her in, uh, what was that, uh, Sweeney Todd? Uh, I saw it, but I have, like, no recollection except for what people kind of looked like. That was some good weed, wasn't it? It's it's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. Take care of the aches and pains. Gives me kind of a light, floaty feeling. <laughs> it's, got, it's got the taste of caramel. <laughs> I can, like, totally not tell one strain from the fucking other one. Oh, I could. When I had my card there in Colorado, man, I could totally tell the difference. My favorite yeah. was Blue Dream, man. If you want to get some good sleep, smoke some Blue Dream. That is good stuff. Yeah. 
I Everybody, all the listeners out there, go to Colorado immediately and try out the weed. It's it's excellent. <laughs> just like uh, the bunny, he'll be happy to have you over to the house to smoke a bowl. Just come on over. His address is. <laughs> like as soon as I found out that that had become an actual law for the recreational marijuana, uh-huh. I came home and I grabbed a picture of Yoda and made a meme. <laughs> I I found a picture of Yoda and Yoda smoking in particular yeah. is what I searched for. So it's Yoda, probably in Dagobah, with with just surrounded by smoke. <laughs> Put in to Colorado, you come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it was funny whenever they were trying to come up with a, a slogan for the state, a new slogan and stuff that, that that people really wanted Rocky Mountain High, and and then the, the the government was like, no, we don't want to promote that. Yes, you do. It's tourism dollars, dumbass. Smoke it, and they will come. But yeah, that was good times. And of course, you know, I left Colorado like months before they legalized it. And, and at the same time, my, my boy Peyton Manning was coming to be the, the quarterback of the Denver Broncos. And people were like, dude, what the fuck is wrong with you? You're definitely moving away at the wrong time. Everything's happening that you love here, you know. Yeah. But, you know, something I didn't love, my ex-wife was still there, so. You know. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't so want now, any kind so of proximity. Now that you bring it up, now that, now you, that you bring, bring it up, up. <laughs> okay. Oh, this no, one. I'm, 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 I'm going to say something else. <laughs> uh oh. But what's your opinion on this whole NFL thing? Oh, I thought you were going to talk about my ex-wife. I'm not prepared. For I, know, I know that's what you thought I was going to talk about. Yeah. What about the NFL thing? What NFL thing? Uh, where one of the NFL players beat up his girlfriend that was, like, all caught on film and shit. Uh, Ray Rice, I think it was. Yeah. If I got that wrong, don't don't be screaming out there in the audience. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, once we get enough of an audience, that's when we, we start doing the show, like, live on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, there you go. We could so do that. So we don't know the answer, like... somebody could just give it to us. <laughs> People could just hashtag the living shit out of us. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah. So and then the argument became, you know, what the NFL is doing about it. Oh yeah, yeah. And well, I, I, you know, I, I have some kind of strange feelings on that because because I'm like, don't. Why does the NFL have to do anything? Don't we have like laws? You know what I mean? I mean, we do have laws, but, you know, people hold those people up to be, uh, to be, you know, heroes and stuff. And, and they're not all heroes. You know, there's some, there's some good guys, but yeah, there are, I'm sorry, there are a lot of shit bags in the NFL. There have been plenty of news over the years about just complete moronic dumbasses doing the stupidest mm-hmm. shit, you know, firing guns for moving cars. There was some Denver player. Uh, they got busted for that and, and, and got thrown off the team. Yeah. And, uh, you know, stuff like that. So, I mean, you know, there's th- – I'm sorry, people. Love this country, but there's no shortage of dumbasses here. Yeah. I, I, there's definitely I, no shortage. I, I just really have a problem with somebody's job – like kind of dictating what you are doing in your personal life. Well, you, you know, know I mean? a, that's the same as, you know, saying that, you know, you don't want sex offenders working at your office, though. I mean, I know it's not the same thing, but, you know, it's still, you know, somebody's life decision, criminal activity affecting their job, you know, and their ability to get a job and stuff. Or even, you know, people who get out of prison, you know, they go, they serve their time. It's supposed to be wiped clean. They're supposed to be returned to society. And then, you know, they get out there and they're like, oh, you were in prison? Well, we can't hire you. Yeah. You don't work at McDonald's because, you know. So that's, I mean, that's kind of my, my feelings on the thing. Yeah. 
And uh, I mean, I, I so seldom have a thought at all about the NFL <laughs> that I had yeah. one. I had to bring it up. <laughs> I had a thought about the NFL. See, see, kids, marijuana doesn't kill your brain cells, apparently. Last episode, Steve uh, Bunny was remembering all kinds of cool stuff. And uh, sure to remember even more as those brain cells pop and disappear, releasing the memories into the ozone. Yeah. The problem with a lot of the stuff that I remember, Mm -hmm. uh, because as it turns out, like a lot of it seems to have been really local to New York. You know? Well, that's where you and, grew up, right? Huh? That's where you grew up, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, like, a lot of the things like that that I was growing up, you probably would not know. Yeah. You know? Which is kind of fun to play with Jeannie, because I'll bring that up. She won't know it either, and I can just, like, instantly YouTube something. Yeah. <laughs> you and, know? G- and just giggle at her at her, at her her uh, innocence and her uh, ignorance. Um, no, ignorance not really. is not ignorance is not a bad thing. Now, ignorance is just not having the knowledge of something. It's not saying somebody's stupid. No, no, I, I you know I don't take it that way. I take it as 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 in to ignore. But um, I am just a disclaimer machine today, aren't I? <laughs> Jesus Christ! I should like work for a commercial company or something. Yeah. So like yeah. so like you know, and some things got a little buzz outside of New York and some stuff like that, but. You know, like, um, like you probably never had Wanderama, which was like this kid show that was on. Um, had what? Every Saturday and Sunday. What was it? Channel 5. Wanderama. Yeah, we had that. Yeah? Yeah. Was That's Bobby like a, some, some, I don't remember who was on it, but I remember the name. That's like some kids yeah. down here in, uh, in the area of Texas where I'm living, south of Houston. Uh, bought up Spinguli. Spinguli from, See, I, I, from, I, from I Chicago. Find, yeah, I didn't find up find out about Spinguli until after I grew up. New York, we didn't really have a horror host that I caught. You know. Yeah, and I think Elvira. She was either Houston or Dallas. I don't remember which. Irma is Bombeck? where she began. Irma Bombeck. Yes, Life is a Bowl of Cherries. Buy the book today. <laughs> no, Elvira. You know, Miss oh, Elvira. Yeah, I think uh, she started Colorado in Houston or in heard. Dallas. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. From Colorado Springs, from what I've always heard. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I smoked too much of that medical marijuana when I was there. Yeah. Her, her See, and we like we that truly. Part. That's two, motherfucker. That's two. Apparently. Two Apparently, my brain is definitely a part of the dying generation. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God killing, we're kind killing, of fun with them. Killing me <laughs> softly with each toke. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, Spanguli. It was funny because now I guess it's like nationally syndicated and yeah. stuff, and it's not the same guy who was doing it before because it looks like a fairly young guy. Uh, but yeah. Spanguli, I was like, they were mentioning that. I was like, oh, yeah, I used to watch that as a kid in Chicago. And I remember Spanguli as a kid. He was an old man. Yeah. And, yeah. First, you know, first so this should be Spang- like son of Spanguli or something. Yeah. First it was Spanguli. And then this guy it came up as uh, son of Spanguli. And then after a while, the original Spanguli was just like, just fucking be Spanguli already. Just take it. Yeah. Take it already. I'm done. I'm taking my toys and going home. Um, what about what about um? What was the there other was one? There was a I documentary. There was a documentary on on Netflix. I would have to look to see if it's still there, but there was a documentary on on all horror hosts. Oh yeah, might be called American Scary. Let me see if I can look it up. Without killing the conversation. Okay, while you're looking that up, I'll fill. I don't remember what it was. It might have been St. Gooley, but I remember there was this one horror host in Chicago, and he always used to say this thing that uh, got cracked us up, which was, flip that magic twanger, froggy. And it'd go, <laughs> boing. And then, and then uh, you know, for tonight's film, we have to look in the garbage can. And he'd, like, open this, like, metal garbage can and, like, pull a film reel out of it. Yeah. 
and stuff. I don't know if that was Fingouli or not, or some other horror host in Chicago. I think there was a couple of them in Chicago, you know. A but there was only them, one Bozo. A lot of them came from Ohio. Isn't that weird? A fuckload of them come from Ohio. Yeah, isn't that Tim bizarre? Conway, Tim Conway came out of that from Ohio. Tim Conway did? Yeah. Wow. I did not he know wasn't, that. He wasn't, like, really an out-and-out horror host, you know, because basically we're talking about, like, a horror host premise. Yeah. You know? But there were other gimmicks to kind of fill in bad movies. Yeah. You know, and then he you mean, like, million-dollar movie? movie? You know? Yeah. Yeah, that would show, like, Beach Blanket and Bingo and stuff like that. Ghost in a Bikini. Mm-hmm. And they would give you the secret word. Yeah, and you'd have to call in to try and win the million dollars with the secret word. Now, here's, I don't know if I ever told you this, but speaking of, like, really awful movies, um, first off, I'm going to give you a quote. Uh, I was watching this Elvis documentary, and one of his handlers said that during Elvis' filmmaking career, some of the scripts were so bad that the king became physically ill upon reading them. (laughs) (laughs) And one of those... Until he was told what he was getting paid. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but Clambake is one of them. And I always wanted to do a lesbian version of Clambake with Katie Lang and Cindy Crawford. Yeah. Wouldn't that be and great? It was, and it was Ed, Ed Wood's first girlfriend. He didn't actually marry her, but she's the one in Glenn and Glenda and a couple of other of his movies, Dolores Fuller. Wrote the fucking music for Clan Bake. Really? Yeah. Wow, this is after, a real stream of consciousness one today. After she left him, she went on to have a pretty decent career. And then Ed just floundered. <laughs> floundered poor, in his in his Ed. uh Yeah, well not poor Ed. Come on, man. No, poor Ed, man. Ed, I'm a Woodian. What do you want from me? Yeah, you are a Woodian. <laughs> but uh but yeah, I mean, you know, he's considered to be, you know, the greatest bad filmmaker of all time, so that's something, you know. That's not, something e- not even not even John Waters can say that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But but I love the little na- naive charm that his movies have. You know? And mm-hmm. frankly, I could see doing a lot you know, with my kind of philosophy of the project that just must get done. I look and I'm well, like, cardboard cockpit with the shower curtain? I'm down. <laughs> well, you know, not only that, I mean, look at look at beginning filmmakers of today. I mean, they are the Ed Wood. Yeah. They're doing it the way he did it. On the cheap, you know, I mean, the, some of the short films, or most of the short films we made were zero budget, huh? DVD, recordable camera, non-actors. Oh, man. You know, and, uh, you know, if you want to, if you want to see some of mine, you can go to youtube.com slash user slash WP2000 and just laugh yourself silly. <laughs> and you can check out anything from Undead Cow Studios, uh, on our YouTube page. That's where the video for Dying Generation, that's where that's going to go, um, along with the short films that I've done, the other, um, animated effects work, uh, and all the shows that are going to be upcoming on YouTube, it is Undead Cow Films, but you'll find it there. I've also you know, been keeping a playlist of uh, of uh, bad movies that I find free on YouTube. Sweet. Now, so for I, some reason, I feel like we should be wearing like these big floppy purple felt hats. Yeah, you know, and, and a nice jacket with maybe some like leopard skin lapels. Some really well, high shoes. Yeah, well, with all the pimping I, that's going on. See, you haven't really seen me lately, and maybe maybe you've picked it up on the pictures, though, but every time I go out, Jeannie had gotten me this top hat for Christmas a couple of years back, and every time I go out, I, I'm wearing my top hat. I, I made it like a biker jacket out of an old denim jacket. Nice. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen the, uh, the outfit. We have, we have, that is my public fucking persona, man. There you go. You know? Pimp Daddy. Um, Pimp Daddy Bunny. And we, we have been experimenting with, with sunglasses. With what? Sunglasses. 
Oh, sunglasses. Okay, yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a difficult one. Finding a pair of glasses that fits fits your face correctly. Yeah, I always have a difficult time with that. I have a pair of uh, computer glasses that I wear, and everybody says they look great on me. And every time I look at myself, I'm like, these glasses are hideous. <laughs> yeah, they're the ugliest damn things I've ever seen. But everybody's like, oh, they look so good on you. I just, I, I guess I'm just not in on the joke or something, you know? Yeah. We we tried a very traditional pair, and then the last time uh, Jeannie was at the thrift shop, she bought me these fucking huge. I I don't think I could do this. <laughs> I don't think I, could do this. <laughs> I don't think I can wear these in public. Okay, so you like nineteen sixty kind of, starlet sunglasses? And that's kind of, no, man, they are so fucking Elton John. Really? Oh my god, they are huge. Do they have like feathers coming off the side and shit? They're huge blue stars. Oh no! <laughs> you know, like you know what that means. You know, they're so huge that that they have like an extender bracket to put on your ear, so the you arm like just... curves all the way in. <laughs> if you're gonna wear those, you might as well just wear pot leaf glasses out in public because those glasses definitely scream, "I get high." <laughs> a lot. Okay. Yeah. Now, now, if they were smaller, because I have a friend who put. Oh well, it's uh the guy you turned me on to, Dean Gunston from uh. Oh yeah, the, the the drummer. I'm not sure what he does. Yeah, he was. Uh, I don't know what he is now. Yeah, mostly yeah. don't Colorado Springs people check them out. They're a kick-ass band. They are a good punk band. Yeah. Um. But uh, he he posted a picture and said something like, taking my girlfriend's car to work, and he had on her sunglasses, Mm -hmm. which were normal-sized sunglasses, and the lenses were just stars. Yeah. And I was like, that I would do. (laughs) And then you saw the pair that, that Jeannie picked out, and you couldn't do it. Yeah, but you know she's she does that and she's just like fucking around, you know. She's yeah. just having some fun, you know. And and in fact, she's almost like kind of daring me, like, do it. Come on, do it! I want to see you walk around in public in these. <laughs> it makes me hot. She she wanted me to, and and this conversation may not be over. I'm kind of hoping that she forgot about it, but yeah. she's wanting me to walk through downtown as Bob. Yeah. Nice. And I'm like, mm, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Maybe I can do that. Not sure. <laughs> we might be running into a technical malfunction here in a second. Hold on. I have to plug my phone in. All right. Keep the people entertained. Oh, right. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's a challenge that I don't think I, I'm going to be able to take up. Uh, for okay, that was that before. was great. Good feel. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, Bob is a is a web series that's going to be coming to Hollywood Cow Studios soon. Um, planning on the first episode to be released on Halloween, which would be a Friday. Yes. So there we go. Everybody, get ready okay. for that. Bob's dirty hey, shorts, right? Bob's Dirty Shorts is still what the name is, even though that's not exactly what it's going to be on YouTube, you know. Yeah. Because it's just going to be Bob. (laughs) And can they find the Searching for Bob episodes on the Undead Cow Studios page? Uh, Yes, the promos for the show. Um, Looking for Bob, they are on the YouTube page as well. Okay, so that's 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 enough pimping. All right, that's that, that's it. We're boring people here. So in our last show, I wanted to touch on this topic again. We mentioned okay. the awake movement. Yeah, I went looking for them, and I don't think I really found them. This, this was something in Florida. It's because they're it's because they're hiding from the Illuminati and the Masons oh. and stuff like that. But this friend of mine who is hiding out from the government and doesn't want the government watching her on the secret camera that's inside of her cable box. Okay. Um, and the secret microphone that's inside of her cable box remote 
is posting all this crazy awake stuff on her Facebook page where anybody who knows anything knows the government trolls these social media sites for dissenters. I mean, that's one of the things that Carnivore, uh, the program that George Bush released on the Internet, is 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 supposed to do, is supposed to read uh, social uh, network posts, uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, things like that. And uh, she's just posting all this stuff. I'm like, you know, why don't you just stand out in front of the White House with a bazooka and a big red flag, you know? <laughs> You'd be less obvious, you know? <laughs> You'd be less obvious walking through a Walmart naked mm-hmm. than, you know, than what you're doing now. But, yeah, they believe that the craziest shit. It's, 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 it, it, I would say it's funny, but it's not. It's, it's just scary. It's like the, yeah. the biggest the biggest bunch of uh, – what do you call it, uh, reverse propaganda or whatever? Okay. Yeah. I don't know why my phone is still beeping like that. Charge, damn it, charge. <laughs> Anyways, you well, probably well, can't you... hear, but it's a very loud beep in my ear, and it's annoying. Thank you, I technology. I cannot hear it on my side. You can? I cannot hear it on my side. No. Okay, that's good. I didn't want it to ruin the recording. Yeah. And you know how I have the love hate relationship with uh with a conspiracy theory. Yeah. I, I, I love watching it, but I also love poking holes all through it. No <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, oh. Here's one we Jeannie and I played a couple of Fridays ago. Uh huh. And I, I'm pretty sure he was national. Do you remember the, the Reverend Dr. Gene Scott? Yeah. From, yes. Isn't he from Austin? Uh, I'm not sure where he was from. Well, I think that's the guy my, my brother used to watch all the time in Austin. Yeah. And uh, the only thing that really kind of bothered me is that all we could do is get the, you know, on YouTube, the only thing I can find were any of the... Uh, the clips from when he was younger. Yeah. You know? I mean, And the older he gets, the crazier the shit gets. That's the ones I wanted to find. Yeah. Where where he is just out of his fucking mind. Yeah. Sitting in the, in the, he looks like Don Imus sitting in the chair puffing on a cigar. Yeah. Spouting crazy ass shit. Yeah. Like the Russians are controlling our weather. I watched one of those. Mm-hmm. As he went on about how the Russians are controlling our weather, and um, how the Pyramid of Giza relates to the life of Jesus, yeah, which was which was unreal. <laughs> it's just like now, see, my personal favorite, and it's not really conspiracy theorist; it's an Armageddonist. Yeah, Jack Van Impey. Jack Van Impey. I used to. I used to watch. Oh him. my God! I love him. He probably knows more about Revelations than any other biblical scholar on the face of the earth. Yeah. His wife, well, they're both spooky, but she's really fucking spooky. And they've been doing it for like 50 years, proclaiming that Armageddon is coming this year, next month, for like 50 years, and they're still on the air. (laughs) You know, it's great. I love it. I love watching his show. He's just the craziest bastard. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, you gotta, I, I you gotta be pretty. You gotta be up up pretty late and be ready to watch a bunch of uh, magic cloth and and super wiper commercials in order to see that one though. Well, I'm pretty sure when this a powerful team up. I'm pretty sure that when I first got into town, and that was like '97. That's pretty much where I found out about Jack Van Impey, and I'm pretty sure he came on like right after wrestling. Which was what time? Like two in the morning. Uh, I don't think it would have been that late. It could have. I was working nights. I don't know. Yeah, I always caught him like really, 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 you know, late in the evening, early in the morning, uh, kind of hours and stuff. But yeah, I just love watching him because he's just nonstop. It's like a machine gun attack of biblical verses, you know, proving his point. And you're so totally convinced. You're like storing canned goods and shit, you know. He's so convincing. <laughs> But for 50 years, he's been completely and totally wrong. Yeah. Coming directly yeah. off of wrestling, you were in the right frame of mind to watch him then. 
Yeah. You totally are. You, you know, were. you're already, you were saturated in bullshit already. Yeah. And you loved it. And your, your, like, your belief is already suspended. Your disbelief is already suspended at that point. Out the fucking, yeah, out <sighs> the fucking window. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And stuff, so. Yeah, wrestling. Oh, goodness. People. <laughs> oh, wrestling's real. Well, yeah, the physical activity they're doing is real, but you really think that some guy gets bounced off the ropes and then comes flying back across the ring into some guy holding his arm out? No, he, he ducks down or something, you know? He doesn't yeah, just run his well, throat right into somebody's arm. Well, you, you, catch him, you catch him mostly in the chest. Yeah. You know. Well, yeah, because you don't yeah. want to hurt anybody. Right, you know, that's the thing. With, with wrestling, you really have to define real. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. are they athletes? Yes, they are. They're incredible athletes and incredible showmen, but what's going on in the ring is not real. And anytime anybody disputes it, then they go and they have some dupe or rube mm-hmm. or whatever come up into the ring and they do that shit to them. And it's the exact same thing. You tell that it's somebody they have set up to prove, see, it's real, see, it's real. And, I mean, I know people that are, like, my age, you know, almost 50 years old who are, like, totally into WWE and into the soap opera it's become. And I'm sorry, I don't remember well, all that crap the, when I was a kid. That's the part I always used to I always used to love. And that's Ugh. what always winds up happening with me is that when the soap opera dies down, then, I, you know, once it's, like, wrestling match and wrestling match for, for like, no particular reason. Yeah. You know, that's that's when I start tuning out. Oh, uh, no, not me. I tune out during the, the, the drama. I always hate it. I mean, I don't mind the shit talking, but it's all like, you insulted my girlfriend. Uh, why do we have to have girlfriends in here? Why? Why so women will watch it? Ugh, who gives but a fuck? They've got hair bands already. Leave wrestling alone. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but you, you really got to appreciate Okay, and maybe you don't, but I do. The the whole hee haw quality to it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Where where the rivalries are so over the top, you it's know? Definitely, and, and it's definitely back so, with it. And the stories are so broad that you just kind of like, shouldn't law enforcement be involved here? <laughs> <laughs> You know, maybe, maybe they just, need to get some NFL players in there. He just dug up that guy's dead mom and pulled it behind his monster truck. Uh huh. I think some of that might be a little illegal. <laughs> just, a, just a skosh. Just a skosh. But but that's that's the shit I totally love. Ugh. Totally. I mean, I I like, like that. I like that. That is such. That is so fucking far gone. <laughs> I mean, I like the shit talking and stuff, but whenever they get into who's dating who and and stealing girlfriends away and stuff, I'm like, we don't need yeah. the soap okay. opera. We need to, we yeah. need the shit talking, sure, because that's all part of the macho image thing. But but give me a break with the soap opera. It's so oh god, kill me now. Yeah, yeah, and, and with it. with that, I will totally agree. Totally. Yeah. yeah. That's probably when I start tuning now. And it's just like, mm, what's this? Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> you know. But, um, and as far as the actual wrestling would go, you know, if I didn't have a good story, I didn't fucking care. You know? Yeah. Yeah, you like, didn't I care didn't about care. the matchup. Yeah, because really, it's just two sweaty guys hugging. Yeah. You know? If I, if I want to see some, some wrestling... The way they used to do it, I'll watch that movie, The Wrestler. Yeah. That was that was some me, good shit. Yeah, it just gives me that kind of homosexual panic for a while, you know? <laughs> you start coming out of your tidy whities Yeah, and I start thinking like, man, they're sweaty. Man, they're sweaty. Yeah. I wonder what his plot smells like right now. <laughs> I bet it really stinks. I could just bury my face and then go. Mmm. I don't know. I, I don't know if anything would get through the layers of icy hot. Yeah. 
That is a spandex. I, I hear spandex does a pretty good job of keeping the stink down. Which, you know, you got to admit, man, if you're putting icy hot on your crotch. You're now, what I want to see, you're a man. <laughs> you're, you're a man, yeah. If you're putting icy hot on the crotch, you're definitely a man. <laughs> um, but what I want to see is, like, retired wrestlers from, like, the 60s and 70s. Yeah. Wrestling with their depends on, you know, <laughs> the big old puffy butt, you know. That's it's what I want to place, see. man. It's moving, come moving place. really slow. Took fucking Ric Flair forever to leave the goddamn ring, and I'm still not sure if he's really gone. Well, so Hulk Hogan too. Yeah. If, yeah. He, if the listeners don't know who these people are, look them up. They were some of the greats. <laughs> so. I have had my times where I have enjoyed wrestling. And from the wrestling, you know, for actual wrestling, the high flyers are the ones that I always enjoyed. The the, the smaller guys, the, the really yeah. almost ballet dancer guys. Yeah. You know, because they would just do fucking shit in the ring that was just acrobatic. You know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you're just like, wow, fuck, that, that took a little talent. <laughs> he know. just took that big guy down with a pure wet. <laughs> just like in Freebie and the Bean. <laughs> exactly. What was that what was that uh what was that Henry Winkler wrestling movie? Oh, I love that movie. The one and only. The one and only, yeah, it's a great, great yeah. movie. Henry Winkler. Love him. He's in he's in one of my top ten films, Heroes with Sally Field. Heroes Heroes is also great, man. Yeah. Uh, he he just couldn't put down the Fonz. You mm-hmm. know? That haunted him forever. Yeah. And that totally killed his career, which is which is a damn shame because he was an excellent actor. I mean well, seriously, exactly if you people great. haven't seen Huh? For, killed his acting career. From what I understand, he he's been pretty much producing most of the time. Yeah, and now doing uh, some like uh, reverse mortgage commercials that he's probably getting paid handsomely for. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, I see him all the time in the middle of the night. Fuck. I love. I. I you know what? About doing television, like regular over the air television. I don't know about cable. The regular over-the-air television, watching in the middle of the night, scares the shit out of me because <laughs> apparently there's a lawsuit against every prescription drug produced in this country. Have you noticed this? Uh, no. Oh, my God, dude. It's like every it, – it, there would be five commercials in a row, and it's Risperdal and Zoloft and Depakote. If, you, and, if you've taken this as a class action lawsuit kind of a thing? Yeah, exactly. Well, see, I don't have cable. I don't really see commercials anymore. Oh, you're one of those people. I, I, go I ahead, have like just, just go ahead and remove yourself from society, Bunny. Just go ahead. Just I know I know you're part of the dying generation, but just just go ahead and do it, man. Pull the plug. Like it, like it's such a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I like my programming. Okay, I want to fit in somewhat. I want to fit in as much as I can. So, yeah. you know. I mean, I don't go so far as watching Survivor or anything, but yeah, got to watch my Big Brother. See how I, how I view this is is that if it's good, I'll hear about it, and then I'll get it somewhere. Yeah, you know. So like, I haven't I haven't missed anything that well, unless I just didn't care. Like, um, I saw The Sopranos. You know, yeah, never saw I, it. I, I've seen all of Dexter. Didn't see all of it. I saw it the first four seasons, I think. I did yeah, see all of Breaking yeah. Bad, though. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I saw. I was in. I was in a hospital one time, and uh, people there wanted to watch Breaking Bad, so I watched a couple of episodes that were probably in like the third season. Yeah. Uh, so I didn't like get the weight of the show. It was okay. Yeah. And then my brother was like, no, watch it from the beginning. And after I watched it from the beginning, I was like, wow, this is mind-blowing. Yeah. I, I, it's I, incredible. I couldn't get into it. I watched the first few episodes. 
and I was well, like, you have to you have to get you have to get past like the first season, and yeah. then after that, it just gets crazy as shit. See, that's like too much work for a show, man. You know. Yeah, I guess. I mean, you know, look at Twin Peaks. The first season of Twin Peaks wasn't, you know, exactly completely mind blowing, but the second season, holy shit! And then, and then they killed it. Yeah, they killed the, one of the greatest American television shows ever. They keep spinning rumors about it coming back. Yeah, but it'll probably be without David Lynch. Uh... I think I think Dave has moved on. Well, he's, you know, he's too busy directing films that nobody understands. Yeah. You know, <laughs> be like David, baby, well, what are you, what are you trying to say here? I'm, you know, I don't get it. I guess I'm, you know, a, a, a dullard or something. But I love David Lynch; he's amazing. But yeah, I don't understand half his films. I I, I just don't find that amazing. You know, I don't find that amazing that you you make something where the answer becomes, well, what do you think it is? Yeah. You know? Well, well, somebody told me a quote from this director named Joe Dorowski who said that if you're, you know, a stupid person, you're going to think my movie's stupid. But if you're a a brilliant person, you're going to think my film's brilliant. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Fuck you. You know what I mean? Fuck you. You and the horse you played in on. Yeah, I could, because that's the same mentality that that drives a lot of shit. That shit. Yeah. Into into becoming elevated, and everybody looks at it and thinks it's really fucking smart. Yeah. You know, like I like Donnie Darko. You know, but let's yeah. not get fucking nuts about it. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm not nuts about it, but I really like it. I really well, like this other No, I'm not saying that you are, but they were like fucking web pages and web pages dissecting every fucking second of that movie. And yeah. it's not really there. You're putting it there. No, the uh, second film I thought was much better. What was it called? Do you remember? <laughs> S. Darko. <laughs> no, not that one. The one about <laughs> Los Angeles. Uh, Southland Tales. Oh, yes. Love that movie. I really need to watch it again. I really kind of liked it. Uh, I didn't get a lot of it. That's how it was with me. I had to watch it like two or three times to really appreciate it. But yeah, yeah. some of it is just absolutely brilliant. I, I mean, I really was sitting there for a while being like, what the fuck is The Rock doing with his fingers? <laughs> <laughs> He's so talented. I, I think that might be really kind of awesome. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Not totally sure yet. <laughs> the Rock. I love. I love. I love Dwayne Johnson. I love his acting. He's gotten. He's actually become like a really excellent actor in a certain type of role. And it's not the tough guy role either. It's the. Uh, it's the uh, kind of like clumsy buffoon role, like he did it in. Um, in Be Cool. Yeah, it'd be cool where he played the gay hitman. Yeah, it, yeah, total shit. I mean, well, I don't know if it was total shit, but it was definitely a disappointment from Get Shorty. Oh yeah, uh, it was a disappointment, but I'm just saying the Rock's performance and it was fucking great. The, the Rock was fucking awesome, and and like, you know, I I, I really think that that helped to make him a lot because like nothing busted his stereotype. Yeah, you know. You know, the rundown was a really good furthered, film. He really could not have furthered himself from being The Rock by doing anything else, you know what I mean? Yeah, there's only so far that raising an eyebrow can get you, you know, <laughs> really. And that's the truth. He did it so fucking well. Yeah. But I really oh. wonder who's picking his scripts. I mean... I, it can only kind of be either he picks his own scripts or the WWE picks scripts for him. Well, I don't know. Did you see um, uh, Pain and Gain with Mark Wahlberg and The Rock? Um, no Pain, No Gain? I have not seen that yet. 
No, it's just called Pain and Gain. Oh, have you have I mentioned the uh, new Kurt Russell movie? No. To you. Anyway, uh, real quick, Pain and Gain, brilliant. Right. If you haven't seen it, see it. It is fucking amazing. I, I've heard it. I don't think I want to see a Michael Bay drama, though. You know what I mean? You do. It's it's not really yeah. a drama. It's a comedy. And it's yeah. so good. He he has proven himself as a genuine director with that movie. Cool. Believe it or not. Okay. Uh, I, I was happy with Michael Bay. I never, I've never never had a bitch with Michael Bay, you know? Well, he had some a bitch with himself. Just, some, people, some people just kind of make shit blow up. Yeah. And sometimes I really want to see shit just fucking blow up. And he makes you shit know? blow up the best. Yeah. So, so you know, there's a lot of you, you've heard it, right? There's a lot of bitching about Michael Bay and shit, and it's like I, I don't fucking care. Yeah. You know, just like a lot of people bitch about Uwe Boll, and I'm like, he's not hurting me. Yeah. <laughs> You know? Well, Michael Michael Bay had a bitch with himself. Actually, is is what the problem was, is because he didn't feel like people were taking him seriously as a filmmaker, and he made some other movie before Pain and Gain, and it was a huge flop, and I believe it was a drama. I can't remember what it was called. Yeah. Um, but Pain and Gain is a brilliant, brilliant comedy, and The Rock is just unbelievable in it. And so, I mean, Mark Wahlberg is doing his regular Mark Wahlberg thing. Uh, yeah. But The Rock is just freaking incredible in it. So so this other movie popped up on Netflix, and it, it comes to mind because, like, those two movies popped up right around the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, and the other one is called Art of the Steel, which um, is Kurt Russell. And it's only, it's only, like, a year or two old. Mm-hmm. Good fucking movie. Good movie. Um, yeah. First off, First off, it's not just Kurt Russell, okay? Yeah. It's Kurt Russell and Matt fucking Dillon. Yeah. Um, I really really fucking like Matt Dillon. Yeah, so do I. Drugstore Cowboys, wow. Drugstore Cowboys I liked. I was not nearly as fond, and you're going to fucking yell at me. I I was not nearly as fond uh, of uh, Rumblefish. Well, I I wasn't. I wasn't. really... I like the outsiders, but Rumblefish was yeah, a bit too heavy handed for me. That's kind of what I felt, yeah. Yeah. Um And wasn't that Coppola? Was that Coppola too or no? That was that was Coppola, yeah. Yeah. Francis um, baby, what are you doing? And I I know well, Jack, um Robin Williams. Um Oh God. Oh, oh and, and God. Was, Wait, I just threw up in my mouth a little. And then it had this kid who I know went out on to do a lot of other good shit, but I don't know his name because I don't have cable. Um, he was in Tropic Thunder as your basic kind of loser, nerdy kind of character. Yeah. You've seen Tropic I, Thunder, I, I, right? Yeah, I've only seen it once, though, and you know me, my memory is for shit. And I'm pretty sure he's been in a lot of other shit. He's He's good. And yeah. he was good in this movie too, and he was completely, um, not completely opposite that nerdy kind of character, mm-hmm. but like as far as far away as he could get. Yeah. You know, you know. So, sometimes if you're a nerd, you're just a fucking nerd. There's, you're not going to act your way out of that. It wasn't the guy from The Big Bang Theory, was it? Oh, he might have. The been, guy who played like, Sheldon. Hey, there's this thing called the internet right in front of me. Hey, there's Phil, a new Phil. invention, kids. It's called <laughs> the Internet. I've never heard of this before. Maybe we should investigate this, like those people they, in the last episode who were investigating Roswell. Yeah, and they want to take that away from us, too. Mm, yeah, I know. <laughs> Jesus. Let's, let's, let's just make the entire world what AOL used to be, you know? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. So if so, I'm trying to build up a website or something like that, uh-huh. uh, how am I going to do it? Or how can you say I have a fair advantage when my site's going to be fucking throttled? Yeah. Can I ask you something? Sure. How long is our recording right now? Uh, I have no idea. Okay, because my boss is calling. Okay. Well, yeah, let's wrap it.
Wrap it up. Work. Okay. I hope so. Well, then we will wrap it up till next week. All right. So tune in then for Dying Generation. You want to hook books again? Yes, I am Stephen Scott Norfolk. You can find my books on Amazon.com and Kindle. They are Dreaded Friday and Other Tales, a collection of short stories. The Alley's Ran Red, a horror detective novel. And The Spy and Mom's Clothing and under the nom de plume Maxwell Robeson. You can also find my first film that I co-wrote, which is called Haunted Trailer with Ron Jeremy. You can find it uh, on BestBuy.com, Target.com, Amazon.com, and other sites. All right. See you next week. I'm Steve Norfolk. I'm Bunny Williams. Y'all take it easy.